preside over, the FBI, that has the lowest level of trust in the FBI's history. People trusted the FBI more when J. Edgar Hoover was running the place than when you are. And the reason is because you don't give straight answers. You give answers that, that later a court deems aren't true. And then at the end of the day, you won't criticize an obvious shakedown when it's directly in front of us. And it appears as though you're whitewashing the conduct of corrupt people. Respectfully, uh, to me, that is inexplicable. Uh, this was never a ki the kind of case in which you could roll up the foot soldiers on the higher-ups because there were multiple lines of effort in this plot to overturn the election. Uh, I do think that the appointment of the special counsel has accelerated the investigation of the former president's misconduct, and I think that is a positive step for the department and for the country so we can get resolution to this. But likewise, with Mar-a-Lago, notwithstanding the protests of my colleagues, they were repeated. Happened. My, happened. my Democrat colleague just asked the director of the FBI whether or not they are buying information about our fellow Americans. And the answer is, well, we'll just have to get back to you on that. It sounds really complicated. But I have other questions. I'm sitting here with my father. I will make certain that between the man sitting next to me and every person he knows and my ability to forever hold a grudge, that you will regret not following my direction. I am sitting here waiting for the call with my father. Sounds like a shakedown, doesn't it, Director? I'm not going to get into commenting on that. You, you, you seem deeply uncurious about it, don't you? Almost suspiciously uncurious. Are you protecting the Bidens? Ac absolutely not. The FBI well, does you won't not, answer the has no oh, interest in protecting anyone You won't answer the question about whether or not that's a shakedown, and everybody knows why you won't answer it. Because to, ev to the millions of people who will see this, they know it is, and your inability to acknowledge that is deeply revealing about you. But let's go from the uncurious to the downright nosy. How many illegal FISA queries have occurred under your leadership of the FBI? Well, there are reports that have come out with different numbers about uh, compliance incidents. More than a million illegal ones? Because that's what the Inspector General said. The Inspector General said that in the 3.4 million of these queries, more than a million were in error. Do you have any basis to disagree with that, that assessment by the Inspector General? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure, actually, that's a, com a correct characterization of the Inspector General's uh, oh, well, findings we're, on well, that. The Internet but, will remind you of I, that in moments. But, but let, let's now go to uh, what the, the court said. The court said it was over 200,000 that have occurred on your watch. W would, do you have any basis to disagree with that assessment? Again, I don't have the numbers I sit here right now. What I can Seems like you, a number you should know. How many times the FBI is breaking the law under your watch, especially if it's like over a million to not know that judgment. number? And I'm Did you not know when you gave the untruthful answer before Senator Lee that this was going on? It was a, it was a truthful answer. I did not believe FISA had been involved in the January 6th. But it was. So you didn't. The answer is the FBI has broken so bad that people can go and engage in queries that when you come before the Congress to answer questions, you're like blissfully ignorant. You're blissfully ignorant as to the unlawful queries. You're blissfully ignorant as to the Biden shakedown regime. And it just seems like it gets into a kind of a creepy place as well. Go to our, our next image on what the court said. Like, just so the American people realize, the, the court has smacked you down alleging or ruling FBI personnel apparently conducted queries for improper personal reasons. People were looking themselves up. They were looking their ex-lovers up. Who has been held accountable or fired as a consequence of the FBI using the FISA process as their, like, creepy personal snoop machine? There have been instances in which individuals uh, have had disciplinary action uh, and Amen. who are no longer with it. I, I can't get into it here, but we can follow back up but with don't you. But uh, don't you see that that's kind of the thing, Director Ray, that you preside over the FBI that has the lowest level of trust in the FBI's history? People trusted the FBI more when J. Edgar Hoover was running the place than when you are. And the reason is because you don't give straight answers. You give answers that, that later a court deems aren't true. And then at the end of the day, you won't criticize an obvious shakedown when it's directly in front of us. And it appears as though you're whitewashing the conduct of corrupt people. Respect, respectfully, Congressman, in your home state of Florida, the number of people applying to come work for us and devote their lives working for us is over up over 100 percent. We're deeply proud started. of them, and they deserve better than you. Time of the gentleman has expired. The
The gentleman from Tennessee is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Director Ray. I thank you for continuing to serve with all of these. Uh, and I'm glad that we have an opportunity for one Democrat, one Republican in close succession to thank you for your service to the country. Um, you are being attacked and vilified by some of the members of this committee and others outside this committee because the Justice Department and the FBI has had the audacity to investigate serious allegations of criminal conduct by a former president. Uh, and I just want a chance to recap uh, how we got to where we are. Uh, during the last administration and for four years, the Justice Department took the position, uh, not unprecedented for the department, uh, that a former president could not be, a current president could not be indicted. Now, I think that's a flawed matter as a constitutional principle, but nonetheless, that was the view of the Office of Legal Counsel and the Justice Department during the Trump years, that the President of the United States could not be indicted. My Republican colleagues seem to believe that a former president similarly cannot be indicted. Uh, that would effectively make a president above the law, beyond the reach of the law. Uh, and in my view, there would probably be only one thing the founders would find more politically uh, precarious and dangerous to our Constitution than the indictment of a president or former president, and that is the failure to indict a president or former president when they have engaged in criminal conduct. Um, the Justice Department, uh, I believe, as uh, Representative Lofgren, uh, my fellow member of the January 6th Committee, asserted, took a very long time to begin the investigation of Donald Trump and his involvement in January 6th. I believe it began with urgency when it came to the foot soldiers who broke into the Capitol and assaulted police officers that day. But at least what I can tell from the public record, the activities of the president himself, some of which were a matter of very much a public record, uh, such as his tape-recorded conversation with the Secretary of State in Georgia, in which he badgered the secretary to, quote, find 11,780 votes that don't exist. Uh, while that was the subject of investigation by the local district attorney in Fulton County, did not appear to be the subject of investigation for more than a year by the Justice Department. Uh, to me, that is inexplicable. Uh, this was never a ki the kind of case in which you could roll up the foot soldiers on the higher-ups because there were multiple lines of effort in this plot to overturn the election. Uh, I do think that the appointment of the special counsel has accelerated the investigation of the former president's misconduct, and I think that is a positive step for the department and for the country so we can get resolution to this. But likewise, with Mar-a-Lago, notwithstanding the protests of my colleagues, there were repeated, repeated requests by the archives to get those documents back uh, from the former president. Uh, and then when those were unsuccessful, there was a grand jury subpoena that was administered. And when that was unsuccessful, and only when that was unsuccessful, and there was evidence that the former president was still withholding highly classified materials, did the FBI go to the step of a search warrant? That was more than a year and a half after those initial requests. This was anything but a rush to judgment in the Mar-a-Lago case. Uh, so I believe the department, if anything, has... has uh, exercised enormous caution, I would say too much caution, in the January 6th commission, uh, committee as work and oversight uh, to proceed uh, against a former president when there are serious and credible allegations of criminal conduct. Um, but I want to thank you for your stewardship during this incredibly difficult time. I don't think there's been a more difficult time for an FBI director. Uh, and notwithstanding concerns I have expressed, None of them go to your integrity uh, or your commitment to the country, and I want to thank you for that. Let me ask you about a different topic, um, although related to January 6th as well. But let me talk, ask you broadly about domestic violent extremism. Uh, I offered an amendment in this committee voted down by the Republicans that we should oversee the increasingly dire threat of domestic violent extremism. Um, one of your recent reports underscored the, the rise of this prevalent threat, and I'd ask you if you would address it today. So the rise of domestic violent extremism uh, is something that uh, I and we have been uh, identifying for quite some time. It goes back well before January 6th. In fact, a lot of people don't know this, but the Joint Terrorism Task Forces that we hear about so often at the FBI were largely created in response to domestic terrorism, not 
foreign terrorism. Uh, but in my first few years uh, as director, we were identifying this issue more and more, and that's why we elevated in the summer of 2019 uh, racially motivated violent extremism to a national threat priority level. Uh, and we saw, I think, about a 40 percent increase uh, in the number of domestic violent extremism investigations uh, all before anything to do with January 6. Obviously, since then, it has, has continued. But domestic violent extremism uh, cuts across the spectrum from the racially motivated violent extremism, militia violent extremism, anarchist violent extremism, uh, environmental violent extremism, uh, and of course, recently, uh, we've had a lot of uh, violent extremism uh, attacks against uh, pro-life facilities, and we're investigating those. So it, it really covers a wide spectrum, and what they all have in common is three things, uh, violence or threats of violence, motivated by some ideology, and it varies, uh, in violation of federal criminal law, and that's the domestic violent extremism violent extremism that I'm talking about when I've identified this phenomenon. Mr. Chairman, could I request unanimous consent to enter into the record uh, two letters, uh, both from David Weiss, the Trump-appointed U.S. attorney in Delaware, uh, rebutting allegations concerning, impar concerning, partiality, concerning partiality in the investigation of the Hunter Biden case? Uh, I, would I thank you. Thank you, Director.